Okay, so the next area we're going to cover is around leadership and management. So my purpose today is really to help make sure that you are going to gain from this increase in sales and profits. Can I see who would be interested in increasing sales and profits? Let's see a show of hands. Fantastic. Some of you might be looking for time. Who wants to get more time back in their life? Who would like to get more that they're doing? More time? Fantastic. And some of you got teams we talked about earlier, and it might be the team stuff you're looking to develop. So who's interested in teamwork, team development? Is anyone got teams here? There's a few who are teams as well. Brilliant. Well, all I've got to do is get you thinking differently. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So if you carry on doing the same things, you're not going to change. So we need to inspire you to change. And my vision for my business is about creating a catalyst for change, growth and abundance. What I like to say though is having a plan. You've got to have a plan from today. But just because you've got a plan written down, it doesn't mean that it's going to help you unless you have the courage to follow through. You know, if you were to build a building on the side of your building now, if you were to build an extension, you wouldn't just get the builder in and say, hey, yeah, put it up over there, make it kind of look the same colour, that'd be great. How big do you want it? Oh, you know, to the end of that tree line, that'd be great, you know. You wouldn't do that, would you? What you do is you get an architect. You get an architect, you design a plan. And from that plan, you would then implement the actions that would build the building. So if that is the case, why is it that most businesses I go into do not have like some kind of active planning tool that they're actually using on a regular weekly or monthly basis to make sure that they're building what is supposed to be being built. And some people just don't do it. Uh, or they have a plan that they show the bank to get the loan, but then it goes back on the shelf in the folder. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that you're actually going to use on a regular basis. Now, some of you may wish to do this. I do this with my clients. There's a tool called Smart Sheets. It's basically a spreadsheet in the clouds. And what it allows you to have multiple access to multiple people, and it's actually a project management tool. And what it allows you to do is put in times, dates, who, and actually you can go down task and you can go down multiple levels. So you can grandfather, grandchild, great grandchild, great great grandchild. It's a fantastic tool I found to use. Now, the reason I found it is one of my clients, about a four million pound turnover interiors company, they ran their entire business on it. You know, all the projects they did, they ran through that. So it's a fantastic project management piece of software, and that's the one I recommend using. And it's about nine pounds a month, so it's not really going to break the bank. And you can have, especially if you've got a team with multiple users. So we've got about 15 or 20 of these things set up now at, uh, at Bonacheer at Tony's client, where they've got the main one that we work on as, with the directors, and each head of business has now got one, and they are then using them with their teams. So it's a great way of being able to manage what's going on and feed that information in. Because half the thing in a bigger business, they don't see what's happening. It's like right hand and left hand are doing different things. So in order to implement the stuff we're going to talk about today, you've got to have the right mindset. Because we know with athletes, athletes do a lot of work on the physical, but is everyone aware that they also do work on the mental side as well? Can you imagine? You know, it's also in the game. It's how they choose to play between these six inches in their head. So some of the things I'm going to share with you now about the success mindset that will help you implement the very things that you come up with today. Now, I know we're taking some time to discuss these things now, but they are the things that are going to help you get what you want to have implemented. So the first thing I like to talk about is about what is your response? How do you choose to respond to things that happen in and around you? because all leadership comes from this gap between stimulus and response. So do you hit it with the angel or the demon? You know, in your head, you've got you know, two people in there already, plus you, so that's at least three. So we're pretty much all schizophrenic. Like we've got at least three people in our head. We're listening to the angel or the demon. You know, are we talking ourselves up or are we talking ourselves down? So are we looking at it with a great attitude? Are we gracious? Are we responsible? Are we enthusiastic? accountable and teamwork, which way are we tipping? Or is it to the bad attitude? Is there blame, antagonistic or defensive? You know, which way do you go? Because one will spiral you down and stop you performing and one will spiral you up. If anybody plays golf, you'll all know exactly what I mean. Depending on the last two shots you played, depends on how you approach the next tee. You're either happy or you're sad. <laughs> and you've got to reset and get ready to play the next hole. So what happens in your head, how you choose to respond, is going to make all the difference. 
So if you give 100% today, you'll get 100% out. If you give to this, you put ideas down, you get involved, you talk with the people on the table, you'll get something from it. If you don't, then you won't. And to make sure you get the most out of it, we've got to get rid of I know, because I know will stop you learning. Who's been on some kind of training, management training course before, you know, who's been on some kind of course? Anybody in the room? A few of you, yeah? Absolutely, so that happens. Now the point is, today you might hear things that are the same, and that's because there are true north principles, things that always work, no matter where you come from. And what we're gonna to do today is try and take that I know out. Don't go, oh, I know this bit, I'll just switch off, I'll just do some email or whatever. Right, we'll have a The mind is like a parachute, it works best when it's open. And also, you'll have some light bulb moments, some eureka moments. When you've got them, make sure you write them down. And in fact, the best way to get them done is to share it as well. Share it with somebody else on the table, because then you actually go, oh, I've shared that, I better get on and do it. Especially if it's somebody you know. And also, we want to try and have some fun today as well. Now, I did do a seven week stand-up comedy course once. It was probably the most terrifying thing I ever did. I stood in front of 150 people, and they paid five pounds each to come and I had to tell jokes for 10 minutes. Terribly scary. So today I might make the odd joke, try and support me because it's ever so scary up here. Just titter and laugh if you think it sounds like it might even be a joke and that'll be great. But let's have some fun because we're going to do business, we might as well do business that we enjoy. Fun, But actually we can all raise performance if we get a coach. I'll show you. Can I ask you all to raise your hands as high as you can please? Raise your hands as high as you can, fantastic. Now if I said to you, stretch, think about it, what could you do to really get higher than that? I'm sure you get higher than that. If you could get higher than that, and I was to give you um, 10 quid, who's gonna get higher than that? Anyone get higher than that? What else could you do? Someone, somebody get higher? Who can get higher? Hey, we have a winner! <laughs> fantastic. Now, yeah, yeah. So with, so with a bit of encouragement, and a bit of extra performance, and I have to check, I'll give you a tenner at lunchtime. <laughs> but, you know, with a bit of performance and with a bit of encouragement and with the incentive of a reward, you see how people can actually expand and grow and develop. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, I'm not standing up. Everybody else isn't standing up. But once one person breaks the seal, then the rest of you make it feel easier to do it. And that happens within your teams as well. You need to coach people to be the ones who stand up and be leaders, because then other people will follow as well. So, to start with, we like to do a quick review. So I'm going to get you to think about your business. Where am I at right now? Before we go forward, we need to have a quick stock take. Where are we up to? Where are we at? And so have a quick think around these typical areas. Could be operations or people, finances, sales and marketing. Just think, where are we up to at the moment? What's happened in the last three months, for example, that has helped you? So just think about where are we at? What's happened? What have been the good things? And what have been the things that have not worked so well, that could maybe need a bit of work on it. Again, we're setting your wraths here, we're getting you to think, what are we doing well, what do we need to work on? Okay, leadership. So the first thing we look at is personal leadership, as in how are you as a leader coming across to your team, how are you as a leader developing yourself? Because if you're not developing yourself, you aren't going to be able to lead at a high level. They say your business will grow to the level that the leader has learned. Because if, if you get to a stage where you think things are plateauing, that's often why it's plateauing. Because you don't know what the next step is that you need to be doing. So we look at personal leadership, then we're going to look at business planning. What do you actually do to make sure your business is planning and operating and working well? What are the systems need to be in place? What are the things that need to happen to make your business work well? I said to you earlier, what we're doing is setting your goals. Your RAS, your, your reticular activating system is the part of the brain that will really filter and program almost what you do on a daily, moment to moment basis. It's making those choices for you. And if you're not positively programming it with the things that you want to be doing, it will be being programmed by other people. Whether it be parents, whether it be people that you trust and know, but maybe don't know as much as you do about the subject you're doing. So you may be getting wrong information put in there. The point is, it's about you choosing to set it. It's like the compass for your brain. It will help you make the directions you choose to go. So the first area we're going to look at is time. Because the thing about time, you can't get any more time back. 
None of us have got a little blue box that can go backwards and forwards in time. The only thing we can do is we can make more money. We can't make more time. So what we choose to do with our time is incredibly important. There are the same 24 hours in the same day for you and me and for Richard Branson, right? And somehow he's done something different with his 24 hours. So we've got to look at what we're doing within that 24 hours. So the first thing I'm going to do is play you a funny little video about procrastination. Because to be fair, I'm sure nobody in this room does it. It's just something to look at that's quite funny. I'm sure there's nobody in here that um, suffers from this uh, deadly disease, which is called procrastination. But it's like having a foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. It's just burning up energy and not actually getting anywhere. So um, I have some tips for getting around that. But really, the thing about procrastination is, is stopping movement. And actually, what we're looking to do is keep you in motion. If you are an aeroplane and you're flying from point A to point B, do you realise that 95% of the time you're off target? Literally, they're flying like this. And they're only on target as they cross over. So it's all about course adjustment. Now, if you're not moving and there's no motion, you're staying in the same place. You're not actually able to make this change. So what we've got to do is keep you in motion, moving. Even if you try something, go, oh, that was wrong, we'll go back this way and we'll try that. Then at least you keep energy going. And that's often what I say to my clients. It's better to get going and get started rather than sitting there waiting for absolute perfection and then actually finding that you've just missed the opportunity because you haven't, it hasn't got, it's gone past you, right? So it's about get going and get better on the journey and obviously keep that journey going as well. So here's some interesting information on time. There is a guy called Stephen Covey and he's got his model that he uses for time management. I've taken that and I've adjusted it into a triangle because I think for me it's just the best way for it to work. So it's in the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is his book. Um, but what I've done is I've taken it and gone, well, okay, what we've got at the bottom is the not urgent, not important stuff that um, we end up doing. So at the bottom you've got the not urgent, not important. So we have to be very wary of our time because actually there is no such thing as time management. It is self-management. It's what you're choosing to do or choosing to let yourself be drawn into. So some of the distractions could be emails, phone calls, could be social media. You start with the intention of looking at something important for business and you end up down here looking at, you know, a cat playing a piano or something. You know, what the hell's happened, you know? <laughs> so escape activities, chatting and gossip. Yeah, it's good to have a chat to somebody and keep the relationships going at the water cooler, but not maybe for 20 minutes or half an hour. Um, one of the things we did at one of my clients, we put in one of these hot water canteens that's immediately usable. Because it's very interesting how many people used to go to the kitchen, put the kettle on, stand around for 20 minutes, have a bunch of other people, you had to make five cups, five rounds, oh dear, only did four, put the kettle on, let it run again, you know. Lots of time was just wasted. Now it's like immediate hot water. And people are just getting their own because it's quick and easy. It's amazing, made a load of difference. And also some pointless routines you get drawn into. Sometimes pointless meetings or pointless routines. I had one client, um, he was um, a, a, a telecoms company as well actually, but a small one. He started on his own. By the time he had about 20 people working for him, he used to do the post. Because he did the post when it was just him, because he liked opening the checks and doing all the rest of it. In the end he was doing the post still going around meeting everybody, using a chance to have a chat to everybody on the way around, giving them out their post, going around the building, giving out the post. Then he'd get the checks. Then he'd go to the bank, because he liked going to the bank with the checks. Then while he was in town, well, I'll we'll go and get a sandwich or something. Then he'd go and do that. Basically, he'd blown out half his morning every day. I was like, what are you doing that for? It's crazy. I said, he says, yeah, but you know, it's the checks. I said, well, you've got an accountant. And he said, yeah, I've got my accounts lady. I said, do you trust her with your bow? Yeah, she's got access to the bank. I said, well, why don't you give her the checks and get her to do that? He went, oh yeah. And he's got a PA, you got a PA, yeah. Why don't you get her to give out the le uh, letters? Oh, okay. Did that, we freed up two hours a day of his time just to focus on developing the business rather than being stuck in a pointless routine that had grown up because that's what we'd always done. So look out for those pointless routines as well because they steal your time. Now what we're saying is, you're allowed about 10% of this. Everyone needs about 10% of faffing time, but just be aware when you're doing it. Now, what I say to myself is that voice, I'm just doing stuff. I say it to my voice, well, I'm just doing stuff, or I'm just doing stuff, when I know I'm faffing around and I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. 
So I've just got that voice now, I'll use it as I think, what am I doing? Oh dear. The next step, we call it the urgent, but not important. So what things are urgent, but not important? Well, it depends how you look at it. Well, well, I'll show you in a moment. You're bang on. It could be that, or it could be someone's phoning up to sell you print. The phone is urgently ringing on your desk. Can you ignore a phone that's ringing on your desk? And then somebody goes on to sell you print, yeah? Or whatever, get you, sell you an advert in something. Yeah, so it's not what you want. So what happens is you can get trivial requests from other people. Um, you might be working on a two million pound, you know, proposal that's really important. And next thing you know, somebody comes up to you and says, there's no toilet roll. You're like, what? <laughs> you know, that's your urgent problem, not mine, right? <laughs> and, uh, and these urgencies, they happen. Um, but there are other people's urgencies usually. It's their own screw up that's caused it to be an urgency and they've then put it onto you. And this is where we've got to learn the word no or the word uh, I could do that but not till then. And um, if you can get rid of these emergencies without you having to be the font of all knowledge and this is where many small business owners make this mistake. As they start employing a few people, they are the hub of the wheel, right? and they love being in the hub because it makes them feel really important. They are the one in the centre and everything rotates around them. The trouble is, as you get bigger and bigger, you've got a lot more people asking for your time and asking you to do all sorts of stuff. I've got one client, they're a um, clay shooting business and the guy Andrew has built the thing from scratch. It's fantastic um, what they've got there, but he was at the heart of everything in the shop. He had his office and everyone would drop in and speak to him. Even you know, the clients, because it was in the shop, all these people who were clients would come in and drop in and he'd lose half an hour here, lose half an hour there, 10, 15 minutes here. Constantly having people come and hassle him. Plus he had staff coming up and asking him all the time how to do things. And this is what created the how-to manual. We created a how-to manual on how to do everything. We got a 133 page manual within about six weeks. We just got everybody to write up how they did what they did. And then if somebody would come to him, how do you do this? He'd say, well, have you looked in the manual? Because if he gave them the answer, do you know what he's training them to do? He's training them to come and ask them again. And they then don't even think. All they do is go, well, when I have this problem, I just go and ask. Right? And then you are constantly interrupted. If you choose to be the font of all knowledge, you'll forever be creating a rod for your own back. So what you need is systems that are like how-to manuals, so, for example, when they used to lay out certain, um, his place is a bit like a, a high-end golf course. They run championships there and they need to lay out things in a certain way. He would go along and complain that they didn't lay it out properly. I said, well, lay it out properly and take a photograph and then you can just show people how you want it every time. He went, that's a great idea. You know, for 20 years they've been doing this thing and they just never thought about doing that. So now they take a photograph of how they want the set up so that it's just something that everyone can look at. So what have you got in your business? You know, it could be like my brother ran a restaurant. He basically took photographs of how everything needed to be plated up so that every meal that was made got consistency. And he wasn't having to constantly go and use his time to check things. If you are constantly checking stuff or people are constantly asking you questions, hold back. Don't give them the answer. What should we do? If they come to you with a question, what should we do? Anybody? Somebody comes to you with questions, what should you do? Yes, absolutely. Ask them, back to them, go, okay, imagine I'm on holiday, what would you do? Or don't come to me unless you've got a couple of ideas first and I'll help you resolve which one we think is best. But don't be the one who has to do all the thinking. It's like they're just putting all the effort and energy onto you. Now I know in my house sometimes I'll just shout out, Anna, where's the butter? I'm standing in front of the fridge. How does she know? I'm just not looking properly. You know, so it could easily be me that resolves it. Uh, and she has learned that lesson by not responding. <laughs> and I have to figure it out myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 60% of people work in this urgent, important time. 60% of your time should be in the, what we call urgent and important stuff. This is your your demand area. What sort of things do you think are in demand 
Got any ideas? Client delivery. Client delivery, yep. Yeah. Anything else? Money. Yeah, money, VAT, paying bills, that sort of stuff, yeah. Deadlines, absolutely. So we're looking at deadlines, pressing problems. Some meetings are very important, they need to be had. Client meetings and things. So deadlines, this is doing the do. So if this is about 10%, this is about 10%. This is about 60%. At the top, we have the not urgent, but important stuff. So what is the not urgent, but important stuff in business? Planning. Planning, fantastic. What else? Strategy, Strategy absolutely, yeah. Personal development. You guys have been looking at my slides. It's fantastic. Planning, self-development, strategic planning. It's that time. Now, we all know it. This is one of them knowing ones. But if you think about it, we're talking about 20%. What's 20% of a normal working week then? One day. Thank God the accountant got it. <laughs> it's one day. So a day a week should be thinking about it. Now, that could be a couple of hours a day every day but it should be working on it rather than in it now the businesses that i've worked with that have had the most success and one of them was a heavy goods vehicle um, servicing company and the guy mark he used to be he was the top technician so we had dirty fingernails and he got the business he bought it because he was the best technician that the guy who owned it had it and sold it to him so he just did what he knew, which was be there fixing it. Biggest problems, he would be there fixing it and doing it. He'd be there late at night fixing the problems that people couldn't resolve. Now, the only challenge with that was he wasn't able to grow the business because he was just constantly in it and not on it. So what we were able to do with him is we started by doing a half a day a week. Then it went to a day a week. End up at two days a week, he would work from home. And in that time, he was able to think about what do I need to do to develop my business? We hired a guy to run the main office so that he didn't have to be there all the time solving the customer queries and it really started to free things up. Now this guy, he started doing really well. He then bought a car and the doors go up like that. It's fantastic and he took me 140 mile an hour down a dual carriageway. Amazing. <laughs> this thing's amazing. Now, I'll tell you, that happened because he changed what he did. What he was always doing was working in it. The more he started working on it, the more he was able to spend time developing it. Think about Richard Branson. How many planes do you think he flies or trains do you think he's driving? He's not really, is he? No. What he's doing is he's setting up teams to operate and do those things. He works at that higher level of thinking about, what do I need to do? Let's find a market. Let's get the right team in. Let's get that working in that area. Not let's go in with a screwdriver and start doing it myself. So we need to spend time working on it, not in it at least 20% of the time. Now, like most small business owners, they do this. They go, oh, well, that 10 is really 20, probably. That's probably 20, and that's probably 80, because we already said how many hours people are working in a day. <laughs> right? So 80, 20, 20, so they're going here. And they just get to about here, and they're knackered. And they really mean to sit there at six or seven o'clock in the evening, do a bit of thinking and planning. They pop in for two minutes and drop out again. They come in, and they go, oh no, and they drop in and drop in out. And there isn't that absolute um, commitment to working on it. Now, if you put that time in your diary regularly, I know you're doing that now with your team, aren't you, Tony? Every, every month, there's like a team, get everyone together, brainstorm and think about it, because I was involved in one of their sessions. Like, you know, what do you need to do to actually focus on it rather than in it? How do you get that time in your diary? And that's one of the things I'm going to show you in a minute, how you do that. But it's the most important thing you do is get that regular time to review and do, like you're all doing today. So well done. This week, guys, you're off the hook. You've done your 20%. By the time we finish today, you've worked on it all day, which is fantastic. So let's look at some time management tips. The first one is set personally motivating goals. So if you've got things that you can aim at, I use a um, piece of software uh, on there here, um, which you can set goals. Um, and uh, put the visual board together. So you end up with a, a vision board. It's called Success Vision Board. So I've got one like that. Um, so you have things that you, what you're aiming at? What are the goals? What are the things you want to achieve? Um, 
if you've got them, they'll get you up and energised. You know, if you walk into the office, people come up to you, how are you doing? Oh, all right. You know, that doesn't inspire the team. They want to see you're going somewhere. You know where you're going. What do you want to do? Being upbeat. You know, when you enter the room, do you want it to get darker or lighter? Think about how you carry yourself. It's about emotional intelligence, that is, and the way that you put yourself across to your team. So if you set motivating goals, you're more likely to be motivated. Don't finish today until you plan tomorrow. Now this is a brilliant one. Every day in my diary, I've set it as a reminder, six o'clock, it goes daily planning, bing, bing. In fact, I've got it in there twice to remind me twice to make sure I go, what do we need to do? What planning do we need to have? What things do I need to do for the next day? Do a quick brain dump. What's the task list? What do we need to do? So I phone up my VA every day and say, here's the things. Have you got this? Is this ready? Can you do that? So I've got a list of stuff ready to go. Eat a frog for breakfast every day. Now, this is a brilliant one. If anyone's heard of that book called Eat the Frog by uh, Brian Tracy, if you've got a task list with stuff on it, guaranteed that some of those things on the task, they are going to be ugly frogs. And those ugly frogs, they're the things that you actually need to do first. Because if you get them out of the way, everything else seems easy in plain sailing. Instead of, I'll do this simple, easy email, tick, got another one, tick, got another one, tick, brilliant, making progress, tick, tick, do a few other easy to do jobs, and then put that, oh, that ugly frog out of the way. Actually, if you've got two ugly frogs, eat the ugliest one first. So, and I'm going to share, <laughs> and I'm going to share with you probably the best time management tip, and I'm sure you all know this because you all know the fable. Let's say you've got a jar, and what we've got to do is fill it with big rocks, small rocks, and sand. So, in order to fill that jar up the most, what do we put in first? Big rocks. You all know this. I can see your time management experts. Put in the big rocks. Yeah, then what do we put in? Small rocks, because they then fit in the holes. And then what do we do? We tip in the sand and it falls into the gaps. That, my friends, is time management. All you need to do is think, what are my big rocks? They're the things, they're your ugly frogs. They're the things you've got to get done first. Because they're the things that are going to make the biggest changes, the biggest difference. So when we talked about getting interrupted, what we did with Andrew is we built him another office, not in that room, put it out the back, out the way, so that people couldn't just get to him whenever they wanted to. And if you wanted to go and have a chat, he'd go and sit in the office in the, um, in the, in the, in the shop. So. Don't major in minor things, i.e. don't sit there going, oh, I've got a load of sand done, get me piles of sand done, that's brilliant. And this is time management for everybody. Look at your tasks, what are the things we need to do, prioritise them, and you prioritise them into A's, B's and C's. Your big rocks, your small rocks and your sand. And then you focus on getting those big rocks done. Now, um, invest time, don't spend it. So I think, what am I going to do with this time? What do I want to get out of this from spending time doing this? If I'm going to do this, what do I expect to get out of it? Is there a return on investment from doing that? And that's what we need to look at. Where are the return on investments? Have agendas for all meetings. So if you've got a meeting that you need to uh, go to, at least make sure there's an agenda. We set an agenda for today so you knew what you're going into. If there's an agenda, it keeps people to time, keeps people to task. You know what needs to come out of it. In fact, I had one client, big electrical contractor business, in their meeting rooms, they've got four different agendas that you can use, different ones for stand, different sort of standard meetings. To make sure you just pull one down, you make sure they're following what it should be. It's either an operational meeting, it's a sales meeting, it's a, you know, it's a customer meeting. They've got standard sorts of forms to make sure that you're actually doing the right thing. Because the amount of meetings they were having that were wasting time, that didn't go anywhere, went around in circles. Nobody's really in charge, nobody really knew what it was. And the worst thing is, they all had actions they wrote down in their notebook, and then nobody was checking anyone had done any actions. Crazy. So now, we write the actions on this sheet of paper. That sheet of paper is then copied and issued to everybody. So everyone knows what the actions are. Okay. Um, have conference calls to save time. Often you can do something where you don't have to be face to face. You can get two or three people together, especially with these new modern phones now. You can bring in two or three people onto a call and just do it. Easy, boom, it's done. 
Um, you know, I've done it a few times with some of the people around the room. You know, I've, I've got a PA on the phone. I, I'm on the talk to her, and I think, right, we need to speak to Simon. Get Simon on the phone. He can talk to her and me, and she can do the actions that need to be done. I don't have to worry about it. I can just create that call to happen. Um, learn, uh, learn to delegate to your team. Oh, it's a one-liner, but this is a big one. What I find is many people make this mistake in business. They go around and they go, can you go and do that, please? And they'll issue something. Can you go and do that, please? Can you go and do that, please? And they issue the command. And I know this doesn't work because I've got children. And I issue the command, could you tidy your bedroom, please? And they go, of course, Daddy. We really appreciate you work so hard going out to look after us. We would love to go and tidy our room because that's exactly what we should be doing. No, they don't do that. <laughs> What they do do is nothing. So you go, right, I'm going to go and check it in 10 minutes. And if the room isn't tidy, I'm taking away your fidget spinner. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you go, here's the command, but you've got to make sure that there's something called a feed back loop. You need to have a feedback loop, i.e. next Friday, I'm going to check in with you. Um, next Monday, when we go to our management meeting, we're going to check this or whatever. So you basically have to have a feedback loop. If you issue a command or a, a request to do something and you don't have a feedback loop, the chances are it won't get done. Because they've got other stuff in their lives and if you aren't the sort of person who checks, eh, you'll never check and they'll never get on with it. So if you start checking, here's a little tip, if you start issuing things to people, start saving a little file for each person and then I use a tool called Things on this, which allows you to set up multiple lists. I'll set up a list, for example, with my PA, and I could just say, oh, the other day, I actually do this, 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 this. She's like, how did you do that? I'm like, I wrote them down. I knew what the things were. So you can follow up and make sure they get done. Uh, so yeah, so make sure you're delegating to your team properly. In other words, that there is a feedback loop. It's the biggest disaster as to why things don't happen. Because people take the path of least resistance, and if you're not providing any resistance, they ain't doing it. There's an old saying, what gets managed, gets monitored, gets improved. So if you don't manage and monitor what's happening, it won't be happening. Or it certainly won't be happening to the level that you want it to. And the last one, we talk about creating that timetable diary. And the reason I say this is, I guarantee you've all used this technique. It was the most powerful time management tool you had at your disposal. We've all used it. How, when you were at school, did you know what class to be in when? How did you know what homework you needed to prepare for and what to do? How did you even know when to bring your PE kit in? What did you use? A timetable. Brilliant. So if you have a timetable, you know when you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. So you allocate blocks of time to things. And therefore, you're pretty organised with it. Now, what happens in business is we go, ah, we don't need that. Um, but actually, if you start organising yourself properly, blocking out time for things. Now, what they say to do is take tasks off of your task list and allocate them to the hard landscape of your diary. So you actually have a block of time. This is not mine, it's just an example, to be fair. But it's an example <laughs> of blocking things out. So you block stuff out into your diary so you know you're getting it done. And that's one of the key tricks of time management take the things off the task list and block them into your diary so you know it's something that has to happen. And when we were at school, we had to have a full populated time table at GCSEs. But then at A-levels, what happens? You have a few more free periods, don't you? So you block in a few free periods. Then when you do a degree, there's even more free periods and you're supposed to not go down the pub and you're supposed to be doing study time and thinking about things. But you still have things anchored in your diary that you need to go to, lectures that you need to go to, etc. So with your diary now, you should have certain elements blocked in, regular meetings like marketing or finance or whatever things you think are important, you know, certain meetings that you need to be having in your business to move it forward, make sure they're blocked in. And if you don't have it on a regular revolving thing, it won't happen. So they call it a default diary because if it changes, you can change it, it's not like locked in stone,
but at least you know you've got a better chance of getting it done. Like I have my martial arts every Thursday in my diary, but last night I decided not to do it just in case I came in here with a black eye. I thought it's better not to do that on the night before, you know? But I do regularly have it in there. So, you know, you, you can have things in there that you will regularly do. Which is why I say you don't block the full time out, you block out elements and then the other parts you have a free time. So you, like so, so you block elements in, but you allow, in fact, one of the... One of the yeah, one of the coaches that I, um, that I follow, this guy Brandon Bouchard, he's one of the world's number one coaches or leading coaches, he says, block time in your diary for catching up. Call it catch up time. Because guaranteed, if you have a meeting blowout, suddenly you go like, oh, thank God that blew out. How on hell would I have got these other stuff done? Just block the catch up time into your diary and you'll find you'll use it. Because you can then do the things you need to do. So, um, there's, a, there's a technique called getting things done, GTD. Uh, his name's David Allen. I highly recommend you listen to his stuff. It's brilliant in the way that they actually help you with time management. Um, essentially, his eight hour CD series comes down to this. You've got a massive inbox, loads of things happening. Could be email, it could be on your desk, it could be on your voicemail, it could be letters and hard copy things, it could be meetings that you go to and you get things in a, in a, in a, in a suitcase or a briefcase. Could be you in the car a lot, or you collect stuff in your car. You collect lots of inputs. And what most people don't do is they don't allocate themselves any processing time. You need to have time in your diary for processing and thinking about well, what do I need to do with this information. And once you've processed it, you put it out into two areas. One is reference material, i.e. things that just need to be saved. And the other is projects, live projects. And with these live projects, you need multiple lists that you keep information in and you use these live projects to fill, like imagine it's just a folder in your um, system or whatever you use, where you are gonna take that live project A and then you allocate things that you need to do. So when you've got time in your diary, you put project A in there and you know where to get the stuff and what you need to do from it. So that's an eight hour CD guys in eight seconds. So you need to really listen to it. It's fantastic stuff. But he goes into the highest performing executives in the world and, and changes what they do. David Allen is his name. Um, by the time you finish, you'll all have a, lab a, a, a labeler because you need to label things quickly and what they do. So this is what we started implementing actually at, at Bonchier. So some of you will have recognized that when I was talking about the leadership part, it was this part here. Did anyone see that these were the boxes here that we were going through? So I suggest what you do is you give yourself a quick score in each area, given what I've discussed, how well you think you're doing at your own personal organization. How strong is your vision? You know, that sort of... Well, so, so far the first one we've done is personal organization, number one. We're about to do vision. Out of 10. I make it out of 10 so I can score it simply. Yeah. Give yourself a score out of 10. Yeah. That's the first one. How, what is your number? A seven, a five, a three, whatever you want. Okay. However, <laughs> give yourself a one. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that was organization. So as we go along, fill those numbers out. So at the end of the day, you'll end up with a score that you can add up, right? So the next step on personal leadership is about your vision. And you need to have a vision for yourself. We're not talking about the business vision here. We're talking about your own personal vision. Where do you see yourself going? So I've created one of these vision boards. Has anybody else got a vision board in the room that they've created? Brilliant, there's a man over there who's done it. Create a vision board for the things you want. So for me, it's time with my family on holidays. This is the new farmhouse I've got, Hilly Farm. So doing, doing it up, spending time investing it. I actually bought it done up in 2007, thought it was done, apparently not. There's all sorts of things that keep needing to be done, including, funnily enough, new curtains, new carpets, new all this stuff that, anyway. Um, you know, I spend time going and doing things with the wife, with my boys. Um, 
I do my martial arts, I do cycling, I do kettlebells. This is one of my clients letting me fly his plane. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to say that on video camera, you might have to edit that bit out. But while we were up, he just goes, you have a go. I was like, ooh, oy, fantastic. Yeah, so that was good fun. I like, no, it wasn't, squ wasn't quite a 747, no, no, no. I want to go out spending time with my clients when they're winning awards. This is one of my clients turned up the other day in his car to show off. Um, it's an i8, that one. BMW i8. Yeah, uh, it's only a like, 1500cc engine, but the rest of it's electric. It still goes like stink. Really good. And there's my boy, he wants to be a racing car driver and go and do nice holidays, whatever. It's the, you know, what is it that motivates you? So have you got a vision for what you want to be spending time on in your life and what you want to be doing? Where you want it to be, where you want it to go? So you've got to know what is your why. And for any of you who get time, to look at this, you want to watch the uh, Simon Sinek, Why. He's got a book called Why. He's got a, uh, but you can read the book, but in, he does an 18 minute TED talk. You know, they're only allowed to be 18 minutes. So he cuts all the fluff and tells you all the good stuff in 18 minutes. It's really good. So we've got to work on this personal development. And the reason we work on the personal development is to get you thinking differently. One of my, uh, one of my mentors in my life, a guy called Richard Wilkins, he talks about the sausage machine. He says, you have got a sausage machine and basically if you want to get great sausages out of a sausage machine, what have you got to put into the sausage machine? Good quality meat. Good quality meat, exactly. Good quality meat, good quality ingredients, you know, herbs and all that sort of stuff. And that will make you good quality sausages. Now, if you sprinkle just a little bit of dog poo in there, <laughs> Only a little bit. Who wants to eat those sausages? Nobody, right? So think about what are you putting into your mind? Because actually you'll find if you sit there worrying about the news all day long, reading all the newspapers, watching all the news, do they ever really tell good news? Or is it in the majority bad news? It's bad news, it's sensational. It's trying to capture your thoughts or your mind. And we as human beings, for some reason, are interested in pain. So we look for things that are negative and painful. Now what you're doing by doing that, you know we talked about your RAS earlier, you are setting your RAS that it is going to be dangerous and difficult and negative and all that stuff. So be very careful what you're putting in and what you should be putting in is good stuff like this. Put the information into your head. This is an awesome digital marketing book we talked about earlier. This is called Dot Com Secrets. This is one I'm just reading at the minute. Um, you know, what are you putting in? What is the good information you're putting in? I've got absolutely, should have shares in Audible, because I tell all my clients to go on Audible and download books. Has anybody in the room got Audible? Yeah. It's fantastic, isn't it? You can also cancel your subscription every month and then about two or three months later, email you and go, would you like a free month subscription? Oh, that's nice. I get roughly a book once every six months for free, it's brilliant. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered with that. I just run mine on. I, I, you got your money, you got your value. You, yeah, yeah. So seven ninety nine. Uh, well done. He saves a month. Yeah. What he doesn't do is. What I'd like to do is add up your hourly rate that we'll work out later on. What your hourly rate is, and how much time do you spend doing that? And in your first keystroke, you've just lost time doing it. Probably. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, so if you want good, you need good information in things like today. Also, I mean, I run a, a, a business mastermind group uh, called a Business Accelerator Club, where we get together with other people and share good ideas and think about where we're going to go. It's 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 a it's a it's a, an idea sharing um, meeting. A bit like we're doing today on your tables, I suppose, is a mini version. But if you get that good information in, you get ideas in, you surround yourself by the right people, you start getting better output. You make better sausages. Yeah? So if you're going to get anything out of today, just think about what am I putting in to get my good quality sausages. Anybody else in your business says, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. As long as you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so first steps as well on the line then is to get yourself organized with your business side as well get your business plans in place so once we've kind of developed your knowledge 
and put the accountability and discipline into you through something like a club or one-to-one -one coaching or whatever it is you do. Because that's what I say, I'm like a personal trainer, but instead of training you physically, I train you in your business. And so instead of making your body thinner, I make your wallet fatter. So it's like getting that kind of discipline in place to do the things we all know we should be doing, but it's actually getting you to do it. I have a personal trainer who comes every Monday morning, knocks on my door and makes me lift kettlebells. And there's no way out of it. He just knocks on my door, he's there, whether I like it or not. I've even tried ignoring it a few times, he just keeps knocking. And you just have to go and do it, you know? It's, it's the way it is. And it makes you, makes you improve. Um, and I think, well, if I wasn't doing it, God, where would I be? <laughs> at least I'm, I'm at least at this stage right now. <laughs> anyway, I like personal growth. I eat too much. <laughs> so business planning uh, is the first step. And what I talk about is quarterly, oh, quarterly business planning. Because you should run in corporates. Anyone works in a corporate business before? They work to quarters, don't they? They work to course because it's a manageable chunk. It's close enough that you can think about things that are going to happen, but it's not too far away, but it's not too short term like in a month. You know, it gives you time to figure out. And that's why we are working in quarters today. So the next event will be in 90 days time. So you can come back and reset your goals. Now, some people's businesses are going in different directions. There's bits they like and bits they don't like. You might have marketing going one way, operations another, finance another. What we've got to do is put in that business plan in place, as we said before, if you're an architect, you put the plan in place so you know where to build the walls, where to put the roof, where to put the electrics, or where to put the plumbing. And same with business, it gives you a focused plan that gets you to fly in formation, all the different parts of your business at the same time. And that's why we use that smart sheet, because it's a centralised place that I do it with my clients, and you can basically keep that so that each head of department can see what they're supposed to be doing, what they're supposed to be at. Then the next step up is thinking a bit further ahead. So if 90 day planning is seeing the wood for the trees, once you actually kind of got a bit of a handle on what's going on, then you can start having those meetings where you start thinking a bit more strategically and it starts happening naturally. I bring it up, I know it's uh, one of Tony and our joint clients, but they said, I can't believe it, they're starting to plan 2018 at the moment, whereas normally they'd be planning next week or this week what's got to go on. They said, look what's happened, we, we've managed to get things so well organised now that we can now start looking to the future and you'll know when you can start getting ready to start doing the strategic stuff because the day-to-day -day is starting to run a bit more smoothly and you kind of know what's happening. Then you can start thinking, right, where are we going this? Where am I taking it? And there's a book called Good to Great and they say that those companies with a really powerful vision in this book, um, about, uh, it's, um, there's about 11 companies in it and, and most of them say that those ones with the strongest vision it's a bit like taking a bow and pulling it back. By putting the tension in your bow, it's what gives the energy to the business when you let that arrow fly. And you've got to have that tension, as in where are we going and where's the distance and where are we actually going to achieve so that people have got something to plug into. They feel like you know where you're going. I mean, who gets on, a, on an aeroplane and goes, yeah, take me somewhere? Yeah, wherever you want to go. You've got an idea of the destination in mind, don't you? You know, you have to choose where you want to go. So figuring out for yourself, what is your vision? This is um, Everest, you know. If you look at Everest, you don't need to know exactly how you're going to do this bit, but you really do clearly need to know your next plan for this up bit up front. And that's like your 90 day is what's happening right in front of you. Kind of looking out the windscreen of your vehicle if you're driving, but your sat nav is planned for the end destination where you want to get to, but you don't know what's coming at you. You only need to see what's happening in front of you in your 90 day plan is as far as you can see out the window, what the signs are, what's happening, what the vehicles are on the road. Same for your business. What is happening in front of you is your 90 day plan, whereas the long distance plan is the map that you create. So one of the things I do with my clients is I create a map. I call it an alignment. We spend the day together working out where are we going? What do we need to do on the journey? And then we come out of it with a really focused 90 day plan that's going to move those first steps along. And that's something you can all do for yourselves. But the great thing is when you've got a powerful vision and a plan, 
you can start working with other people to get there. They can start working with you and tying up together. And what you'll notice, these are guys are all roped together, so they're all in it together. And you'll notice the ropes dragging along the floor at the back there. And that's because there was a guy sitting on the back with a pair of skis. And they decided, right, time to get rid of him. So look out if there's some people who are just, just, just coming for the ride and not necessarily pulling their weight. The next bit is to look at is, okay, let's get these quarterly plans, great. But if we don't review it every month, then it's not really, really helping. It needs to be like, where are we at? Like a management meeting. Some of my clients use it weekly. They just, every week, they have a weekly meeting. How are we moving towards these goals? And make sure you're reviewing it. And that's where you get that delegation coming in. Because in, you've got a feedback loop, a mechanism for feeding back. And then obviously every quarter, you reset the plan again. Press reset, reorganise it. And one of the things you could do is start thinking about your culture as well. What is the culture in your business like? One of the things you need to start thinking about is what is the culture of a business? There's a book company called Zappos. Tony Shea is the guy who created Zappos. In 10 years, he took that business and sold it for $1.2 billion to Amazon because people told him you couldn't sell shoes online. And that's what he did. It's an amazing book. In fact, Delivering Happiness is one of my top recommended books written by Tony Shea. He tells you about how he created a company full of the right culture is what they spent their time on. Either it was too corporate a thing to do to start with, then he wished he did it sooner. Because it was a bit like in Christianity, you have the Ten Commandments. That means as long as you generally follow those commandments, you don't actually need a priest over your shoulder making sure you're doing the right thing or not every day. So you need to have this culture in your business that sets the standards, the expectations, how people operate, and there's an example here with Zappos's culture, and you can look it up online, um, which is delivering a wow through service, embracing and driving change, create fun and a little weirdness, be adventurous, creative and open-minded, pursue growth and learning, build open and honest relationships and communications, build a positive team and a family spirit, do more with less, be passionate and determined, and be humble. My favourite is create fun and a little weirdness. But anyway, it's great, you know, you hear the guy's story about how they built it and what they did. And each one came about because of a reason in their business and some change or something they had to do. Um, and, and they had such a successful business because the culture was so strong. It's the thing these days that really builds a business. That guy, RJDM, who just won Jaguar Land Rover, he's got one of the best cultures in a business I've seen. He's got to keep the people from leaving and going to London and Manchester, because that's where it'll go for the, for the industry, the 3D animation industry. They've literally got, it's called the Star Wars room, that we use his boardroom to coach in, and uh, he's got a life-size Darth Vader stormtrooper. As you go up the stairs, he's got a Batman, full-size Batman, full-size Deadpool. He's got a ball pit, in the downstairs office where they all sit down and have creative idea sessions. Right, the whole place is just brilliant. And actually their biggest clients now come there for meetings. They have Nerf gun fights and everything. It's brilliant fun. It's like they've got a big table full of sweets and chocolate bars. They've got a healthy section. They've got a fridge. They've got a beer fridge. So all this stuff just makes it like the coolest place to work. Makes everybody love it. And um, his people don't leave. In fact, he has people knocking at the door wanting to come and work there because they've created the culture that makes people want to stick. All right, so the last bit is all about that planning and strategy. You know, are you putting that 20% in a week? Where's that one day a week going towards developing and growing your business? Because you'll get most growth in your business by working on it rather than in it. And finally, at the top end, you would hire a, a CEO or an MD to run the business so that you don't need to be there. Um, most people in the room um, they may be thinking about that and succession planning in the future, but if you're at that stage now, I've got one client that did it, the guy who had the i8 BMW, he just hired his MD to run the thing so that he can just basically go on holiday eight times a year and turn up at my house with his flash car. That's, you know, he gets to enjoy that sort of stuff now because he's got to the stage where he can put an MD in. All right, so time for you to please complete your personal and business leadership management goals. So go down on either side, give yourself a score for your personal and for your business management, your personal leadership. Give yourself a score for each area 
out of 10 as you go down there and there and obviously add them up and then um, write in the planner any things that you think you should be doing what are your key actions that you think you should be doing now as I talk and discuss from the front of the room some of you may be filling this in as you go if you're not then I would suggest you start thinking about putting some of those key things that you hear. You think, right, I need to do that. I want to put that in. So you've now got the next sort of five to ten minutes to go through, score them, and then put in what you think you're going to need to do. Now, remember, it's a 90-day plan, not a 12-month plan. So don't put tons of things in there. Put in the one, two, or three things you really want to get done. Don't worry, because every 90 days you reset it and you put the next things in that you need to do. Well, all I've got to do is get you thinking differently. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So, so if you carry on doing the same things, you're not going to change. So we need to inspire you to change. And my vision for my business is about creating a catalyst for change, growth and abundance. 